Hey kids, it's Justin James, and on this Justin James Explains, we're looking at Echinodermata. Now the name Echinodermata means spiny skin, and that includes sea stars, um, sea urchins, sand dollars, those, those things. Now the weird thing is this, there's very few toys of those animals. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, other than, quote, starfish or sea stars, and I found one sea cucumber, there are no other Echinoderm models out there. I'm, I've checked Amazon, eBay, all the online sources. If you know of any, let me know in the, in the comments below. But the idea here is very simple. Um, the most famous group of echinoderms in the fossil record, at least, are crinoids. They're called sea lilies or sea flowers. And they look like a little stalk and they have little flowery parts and they filter feed that way. They don't make models of these guys. So I'm going to go over what we do have and go from there. Now, one thing to point out is we have a sea star, aka starfish. Now, again, they are not fish. They are echinoderms. They don't, you know. But whatever, the idea is that when you see a sea star, they kind of just sit, they have, they're known for having five-fold or pentameric symmetry, meaning that we are bilateral, you and I being humans, you cut us in half, we're equal, mirror on both sides. Pentameral, penta meaning two, because bi, bi means, sorry, bi means two, penta means five. Like you bisecting something, you cut it in half, or dissecting something in half. Bi, penta means five, pentagram, pentagon. So they have five-fold symmetry, and then these arms here. Now, one thing to point out too is that they are essentially uh, uh, moving around on what's called tube feet. So, where you and I have like blood um, coursing through our veins per se, they have they suck in ocean water, and they use like essentially internal hydraulic pumps to move them around. So, if you ever go to an aquarium where you can pet the animals, or if you just look through the glass, you'll see a sea star moving around, and you'll see under if it, if it lifts one of the arms up, you'll see these little bitty things moving around. Those are called tube feet. And they actually have hundreds of those, depending on the species, in each arm. And they're moving around. So the arm is here, and there's two feet pushing it like this below that. Um, and and suppose they find food, they can grab it and move it that way. So it's really, really alien. And people always ask me, you know, why, why do you get so mad, James, about the like many alien movies having anthropomorphic or human-like aliens? Because on Earth, we have, an, we have an alien here. I remember in college, I said, professors of biology... How are these things like animals are alive? No, like we don't know. They just are defined that way based on characteristics. I'm like, yeah, but this is weird. It takes it in ocean water and moves around, you know. Um, anyway, so one thing to point out too is that yes, uh, if you cut off a sea star's arm, it can regenerate the arm. Uh, one of the jokes about this, or the anecdotes I was taught in college, was that these fishermen would put their nets down overnight, and the fish get caught in it, right? And then sea stars smell food they will come in the area and they begin to eat the, eat, the, eat the fish so the fishermen will pull out of the water next day and their fish will kind of like it would be damaged goods the sea stars will be still there eating part of it so they would get mad and they cut the sea stars up and then throw them in the ocean and then like the next like week later there's like twice as many sea stars kind of thing um that regenerative property is very important uh people often ask me you know why do you teach or why are you so excited about a worm or a crinoid or a trilobite and the fact that it existed and it's fossilized is one thing but the other thing I'll tell kids too is that it's important because these things can regrow limbs. If we are able to figure out how to genetically do that in humans, how amazing that be for like our veterans, you know, alone. So, uh, you know, it's science, you know, there's many stories in science of learning one thing and then applying it somewhere else and making a change, right? So anyway, so with sea stars, what's really neat about them or weird about them is the earliest echinoderms are about Ordovician time, or actually Cambrian now at this point. They found some new ones that are declassified. But the oldest thing that could be a ancestor-like thing to the, the sea stars is like Ordovician age, about 400 million years ago. But true sea stars, or the ones we know and love, don't show up to the Triassic period. Now, bear in mind, the Permian extinction about 250 million years ago was one of the, was the greatest dying off of life on Earth. Many crinoids died out too, and many other animals, fish and things died out as well, and many land animals died. And sea stars show up after that. So we don't know if there was an ancestor there that, you know, there had to have been by definition of evolution, but that looked like them, because we don't find them in the play. We don't find sea star fossils in the, in the you know, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, you know, Permian. And in trash, they, they're just there. So clearly the condition, they may have been there and they, they may have been underdogs or understudies to the other life forms. And then when the extinction happened, they were able to kind of jump in and do their thing, right? And they're stewards today. Um, Yes, so the other one I'll show is a sea cucumber, and again, super rare toy. Uh, not expensive or hard to find, it's just they don't make sea cucumbers. And I can kind of see why, because sea cucumbers aren't, they don't look like anything. <laughs> um, they are echinoderms because the same kind of materials, the, the 
the sea stars and sand dollars make their shells from. These guys do too. Um, and they actually, when they feed, they have these like branchy tubes that go out and they kind of grab, well, depending on the species, but they'll grab different things and bring it inside the body and eat it and then put more mucus to grab more stuff. Uh, there are many videos online of when sea cucumbers are feeling threatened that they just kind of throw up their guts. Um, and that's weird looking. So that's a fun YouTube uh, wormhole there. But again, uh, these guys, fossil record wise, don't have skeletons like, like you know, a, a sea star or a, a, a sea urchin to have these hard shells, you know. These guys have little 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 pieces, kind of like um, like check cereal, like this little pattern. <laughs> and that's what make, makes their shell. So when they are relaxed, they will stretch out because they're, they're very flexible. And they're from uncomfortable, they kind of pull in like this, right? So we find just these little smattering of these tiny little fossil pieces. And we know that was a sea cucumber. There's no shape to it. It's just these things are here. It shows it was there, right? So again, these guys are, very, you know, not, and oh, on the bottom, they move around with two feet as well. So that's, you say how they're related. They have two feet. Um, and also they have like usually five-fold symmetry in their design as well. It's not as obvious in the tube that it is in this guy, but it's there. So again, the, ma the main takeaway from this video is appreciate sea star toys. Appreciate these cucumber toys for the rare they are, but demand more crinoids. We need them. That being said, I'll see you guys later. Thank you very much.